All right, so we are at the Boone Fort parking area. We're about to hit the trailhead for the Nuwadi Trail. It's a 1.2 mile easy hike um, into, see, I forgot what the landmark was, but there's a site there. There's also quite a few campground, campsites, not campgrounds, campsites on the way in. But first we gotta go up here, register, and let them know that we are actually on the trail. Just by how this trail has started, it looks like it's actually going to be a really good trail. Lots of rocks, which of course that means that Mr. Klutz might come back, but it just looks cool. All right, we just registered, which in Grandfather Mountain State Park, you need to register to say what trail you're going on, your vehicle, phone numbers, emergency contact, just in case if something does happen to you, they know how to reach you, know how know to go look for you, where to look for you, and who to get a hold of, just in case. So, we're in bear country. Yeah, we're in bear country. So, um, Andrea was just saying, like, she knows this is quickly moving up my list of ones I like, which is true. Don't know if it's going to top Mount Mitchell, but it's a nice trail so far. And somehow, I'm already a little winded, and we just started. And we have made it. That's our path. So by the time that we finish this trail and head back to the parking lot, it'll be roughly 3.5 miles. So we're going to have to take our time, let the babies rest on the way, and let us rest. Because we know what happened last time we did that much hiking in one trip and I don't think either one of us feel like carrying them out <laughs> especially not over all these roots and rocks because yes they're definitely ankle turners so Go bear. yeah <laughs> definitely bear country so might not make it to Lake James today just depends on how long it takes us to go out to the end of the trail and back so if we don't make it, it'll be fine. We can either get it tomorrow, get it Sunday, or make plans to get it another trip. The landmark I could not think of that's at the end of this trail is Storyteller, Storyteller's Rock. Good Lord, I do have a problem. I can talk about anything and everything whenever this camera is not rolling. But as soon as I hit that record button, I go, that little yeah, yeah, that little yeah, one up. I go, that little yeah, 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 that little yeah, yeah, that one up. That's what usually comes out. You usually don't see it because we usually don't put those videos on here, but there you go, you got a little piece of it. <laughs> so we have a half mile till Storytellers Rock. So we've roughly done 0.7 on this trail. So overall, uh, 1, 1.1, 1.2 miles so far. So not too bad. They're ready to go. And if you wanted to come here to go camping, here is actually one of the campsites. This is the streamside site. Got your little fire pit. Someone's actually made a couple benches out of trees. So not too bad. You also got the area up there. So you got this area that I'm standing on for your tent and maybe up there. So not a bad site. This is one of the, I think three or four streams that we've crossed so far. Which you can see, all right, let's just get in and play. Really neat. And here, yeah, here's your little walk path going through. But just look, yeah, she likes the stream waters and she likes the hikes. Probably the best thing about those stream crossings are we've done three of them so far. At Stone Mountain, we did two. What happened on the second one? Somebody's phone went into it. So, so far, so good on not dropping the phone this time, but. Of course we're coming up to another stream crossing so one mile down point two to go and i have to say this last point two has been probably the hardest out of all of it especially this last stream crossing i was just talking about that was actually one of those where i don't see how somebody said this is easy i'll put that stream crossing at least going up the other side at least a moderate just because well maybe it was tougher for us because the dogs 
I don't know. The rest of the trail's been not, not that been that bad. But we had to watch the girls hold them up and make sure they didn't slide down the rocks the entire time across. So that was fun. <laughs> so let's get these last two point two in so we can turn around and go right back. Looky there. We have finally made it to the top of Storyteller's Rock. This is the view of the, oh, what is it called on Grandfather Mountain? Callaway Peak? Yeah, Callaway Peak, thank you. Callaway Peak, which... Is it McCray Peak? Nope, it's Callaway. Okay. Um, it's the highest point of Grandfather Mountain, but we're right here on top of the rock. Yeah, it says an easy trail, but no, it wasn't. Especially with these two little babies who want to be little mountain goats, run up ahead of us and make it difficult for us to catch up with them. So that wasn't fun, but this is a great view. Um, really awesome. So glad we did this. So we're going to sit here for a little bit and enjoy it because for as much as we did to get up here, yeah, we're going to be here for a little bit. <laughs> You know how you go to some tourist locations and they have these t-shirts to say, I went to blah, 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 and all I got was this t-shirt. Well, I've got a new t-shirt for Grandfather Mountain, at least for me. I went to Grandfather Mountain and all I got was a rock up my butt. Good Lord, coming off of Storyteller Rock. I had Ari with me, she's pulling a little bit. I'm not wearing my hiking boots today, I'm actually wearing my uh, tennis shoes. It, doesn't say it, was an easy it says an easy trail, so we weren't figuring we were actually going to need our hiking shoes. Actually, mine are out in the car. So, I hit a spot where I slipped, and when I slipped, I had one leg stay on the rock, one leg go over the rock, and I landed right on the edge. And it was the edge pointing straight up. So, needless to say, I feel like I've been a little bit violated here in Grandfather Mountain. But, we finished up that, we're on our way back, so we got about 1.2 miles to go to get back to, well, actually, that's to finish up the trail. We got 1.6 miles to get back to the car. So, got a little bit of a trek ahead of us. It took us roughly 45, 50 minutes to get in here. It took us probably a half hour just to get to the top of Storyteller Rock and back down, so. Everything going back out is downhill though, so hopefully it won't take as long going back. This has turned out to be such a nice and beautiful day to do this hike, especially here. It's strange to think that here in just a couple days, if the path stays the way it is, Hurricane Irma will be coming through here because nice cool day. I'm gonna say it's probably low 60s right now very blue sky just a few clouds the paths are really nice shaded it's been great and considering it's the first week of september yeah we're in september now so this has been a really nice day to do this hike and someone had to take a break to smell something all right while we're walking out i figure it's be a good time to do a little bit of talk about grandfather mountain state park the attraction and everything if you've never been to Grandfather Mountain, the actual mountain where you pay, it's, it's a pay attraction. If you've never been there, then $20 a person. $20 a person and definitely for, you need to go at least once. The trails up there are great. They're a little bit more moderate to strenuous because there are ladders involved, but it keeps you on the pinnacle of the mountain and actually even takes you over where you have a view of Grandmother Mountain. Um, you also have the Mile High Swinging Bridge, which is there. So it's a really neat place to go to. You it's could it's dog friendly too. It's dog friendly. You could you could probably spend most of the day there. Yeah, the trails up there. Since you have the ladders and all, they actually advise you not to take dogs just for that reason because they've had so many dogs get hurt in the past. Oh, and it's a great place for like picnics. It is. It is a great place for picnics. It's got a good visitor center um halfway up the mountain plus like we said before there is a uh, and all kinds of stuff. yeah a animal viewing area bears deer i can't remember what else has been there because 
what it's are the things in the water. Are they, are they otters? Yeah, otters. Um, it's been probably 10, 11 years since we've been there. But in 2013, the state of North Carolina took over the land here and turned it into a state park. So if you've been to Grandfather Mountain, make sure not to forget that there is stuff you can do here and not have to pay. Uh, we didn't know about these trails before, um, before we started looking for them. And I would really be upset if I knew that these were here. We missed out on them because they're such a great sight to see, great trails, lots of great scenery. You can see just a good views from the trails and the outlooks on them um, that you can up on Grandfather Mountain. Might be different ones because it's like we said whenever we were actually coming going to the uh, Ranger Park uh, the park office if you actually up on Grandfather Mountain most of your view looking out is going to be the city of Linville and the Grandfather Mountain Golf Course. That's mostly what you're going to be looking at but it's still a great view looking out from it. But if you actually come do trails like this one, your views are going to be of Grandfather Mountain and the Callaway Peak, Callaway Keek, uh, Peak, McCray Peak, and the areas around here that are the things that you actually want to see. So definitely just do a little bit of research, find out what you really want to see, and see if it's going to be something you want to do inside the state park where you don't have to pay, or to pay the $20 per person and go inside the pay park. And a good thing is... The state park accesses are on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Yes. The Grandfather Mountain Pay Attraction is on 221. Yes. If you're coming down the Blue Ridge Parkway, these are really easily accessible. Yeah. If you're on the parkway, you're going to get to all the trails here. You'll see little uh, turnoffs for them. Most of them have their own parking lots. So very easy to get to. And they're free. If they're free, they're from me. I forgot to film this on the way in, but this is actually where you fill out your permit to hike and camp. The bottom slot is where you get your permit and you fill it out and put it in there. Pencils are here. For your campsites, it basically has on here what each of the campsites are. And as long as there's nobody marked for it, which as you can see, only one person is marked right now. That's for the stream side. You can camp there and just fill out your permit. And I'm thinking that camping here is free. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. Campsites are free, first come, first serve. There you go. So free campsites, first come, first serve. As you can tell, we're back in the car, so we finished up that hike. The girls are a little bit tired. They're in the back asleep. So we are on our way to our next stop on the Blue Ridge Parkway, and that is Limbo Falls. And then after that is the North Carolina Museum of Minerals, and that will actually get us back to the point where we were a couple weeks ago. So we're narrowing down the sections of the parkway that we, we have, have one left. yep and then we'll have one left and we'll actually be doing that next weekend so uh yeah we got two stops on the parkway left for today and then if time permits we'll head up to lake james state park